Macmillan English Language Book 3 CD 1 Track 1 Revision 1. Listen and find the people. Jim is a waiter. He works at the Green Parrot Cafe. Tom and Andy are on the path. Andy is carrying a net. Tom is holding a football. Max is four years old. He has got a sailing boat. Mrs White is a teacher. She is Max's mother. Mr Carter is next to Joe. He has got a cola and a beef burger. Joe is nine years old. He has got a chocolate ice cream. Miss Hill is on the running track. She can run fast. Lily is opposite Joe. She is three years old. Mrs Carter has got orange juice. She is eating sandwiches. Track 2 2. Listen. Who said this? Here is an apple, Lily. Would you like it? Please phone Dr Green, Nurse Hill. Hello, Andy. Oh dear, the potatoes are falling on the ground. Hello there, Jim. The oranges look lovely. I would like some bananas too, please. I can pick up some potatoes too, Mum. This is Nurse Hill speaking. Can I speak to Dr Green, please? Here are your oranges, Mrs Carter. Track 3 Here is an apple, Lily. Would you like it? Who said that? It was Joe. Please phone Dr Green, Nurse Hill. Who said that? It was Mr Carter. Hello, Andy. Who said that? It was Jim. Oh dear, the potatoes are falling on the ground. Who said that? It was Mrs White. Hello there, Jim. Who said that? It was Andy. The oranges look lovely. I would like some bananas too, please. Who said that? It was Mrs Carter. I can pick up some potatoes too, Mum. Who said that? It was Max. Can I speak to Dr Green, please? Who said that? It was Nurse Hill. Here are your oranges, Mrs Carter. Who said that? It was Tom. Track 4, Unit 1 Professor Inkspot's Telescope Bang! Billy woke up with a start. He looked at the clock. It was half past six. Bang! Billy jumped out of bed and ran to the window. Next door, he could see Professor Inkspot's shed. There was a small cloud of blue smoke above the shed. Billy saw a green flashing light. Fizz! Pop! Bang! The light changed to red. Billy got dressed quickly.
and ran round to Professor Inkspot's shed. Are you there, Professor? he shouted. A strange whirring sound began. A bell rang, and an orange light turned to green. It works! a voice exclaimed. Professor, Billy called, is that you? Of course it's me, said the voice. Come in, Billy, come in. Billy stepped slowly forwards and went inside. Professor Inkspot stood next to a strange machine. On the front were four large dials with numbers. Below the dials were several bright red buttons. In the middle was a square screen. Beside the screen was a handle. Under the screen was a row of switches. What is it? Billy asked. It's an interactive space telescope, replied the professor. It shows you what is happening in space. Do you want to see it work? Yes, please, said Billy. Look here, said the professor. You turn this and press these and pull those upwards. For several minutes the professor was busy. His hands moved quickly over the machine. Billy waited quietly and watched. At last the professor turned round. It's ready, he said. Professor Inkspot pulled the handle downwards. A red light came on. He turned a dial. It clicked noisily. Then there was a loud buzzing sound. Billy jumped backwards. Don't worry, shouted the professor. Look at the screen. Billy saw small people in spacesuits. There were trees, but they were blue and yellow. The sky was bright pink. It was another planet. The professor pointed to a tree. Watch this, he said. He pushed a button. Suddenly the tree filled the screen. Billy saw a very strange silver bird in it. Let's look at the people, said the professor. Press that switch. Billy pressed. At once the people on the screen were big. Billy gasped. I know those people, he said. What? said the professor in surprise. Yes, said Billy. Those are the people in my favourite TV programme, Adventures in Space. This isn't an interactive telescope, Professor. It's an interactive TV. Track 5. Unit 1. Listening. 1. What did Professor Inkspot see on his screen? Listen and write the numbers. Number 1. I saw a big crowd of people. Suddenly the crowd shouted, Goal! All the people immediately jumped up in the air and started to cheer. It was very exciting. Number two. It was a sunny day and the sky was blue. Suddenly I saw some dark grey clouds and it started to rain. Can you guess what I saw next? That's right, a rainbow. Number three. A strange machine landed in the park. The door opened and out jumped two little men in silver spacesuits. Was it real or was it a television programme? I don't know. Number four. There was a big box on a table. A little girl opened the box. Inside there was a big teddy bear. The little girl smiled. She was very happy. Number five. I saw a strange machine. It had a big screen. There were buttons and switches and dials, too. Suddenly, lights flashed and letters started to appear on the screen. I watched carefully. H. E. L. P. Help! Track 6. 2. Listen and chant. Blast off! Smoke billows, flames spurt, engines roar, ears hurt. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, one, zero, lift off. Ground shakes, crowd cheers, rocket climbs and, and disappears. Track 7. Unit 1. Spelling. In some words, the double O makes a short sound. He looked at the clock. 1. Listen and read. The cook took a look at the book. Track 8. Unit 2. Chinese dragons. Chinese people love dragons. They have many stories about them. In the stories, the dragons came from the rivers. They brought water for plants, animals and people. That is why Chinese people like them. In China, you can see them everywhere. On buildings, on bridges, on gates, on chairs, on vases and on clothes. The king of the dragons was very strong. It looked like lots of different animals. It had a head like a camel and horns like a goat. It had the small ears of a bull. Its neck and body were like a lizard's body. It had green fish scales from its head to its tail. It had the paws of a tiger and the sharp claws of an eagle. Dragons were usually greenish. Another kind of dragon was green on its back, yellow at the sides and red underneath. Sometimes a dragon was blue all over. A dragon could be huge like an elephant or it could be small like a tiny lizard. In Chinese pictures, some dragons have wings. Sometimes a dragon is thin like a snake. Sometimes they are fat and they look like giant frogs with tails. They can have long beards and bushy eyebrows. They can look very fierce. Dragons can breathe fire, but they do not hurt people. Usually they help them and Chinese people think that their dragons are beautiful, friendly and wise. In one old Chinese story, a dragon with nine heads helped the king. Every night, the dragon and the king met at the top of a golden tower. The king told the dragon about the problems in his country. The dragon helped the king to think wisely. The people were happy because they had a good king. Chinese emperors had dragons on their beds, on their thrones and on their boats. When someone called the emperor Dragon Face, he was very happy. The Chinese princesses had dragons on their dresses. They told each other stories about helpful, friendly dragons. This dress belonged to a Chinese empress. The dragon has a big head with horns and whiskers. It has fish scales and spines on its thin body. It has five short legs and claws on each foot. Flames are coming from its body. There is yellow on this dress because it was for an empress. Only the emperor's family had yellow on their clothes. Track 9, Unit 2, Listening. 2. Look at the pictures and listen to the story. Once upon a time there was a family, a father, a mother, a son and a daughter. They lived in a little house on a mountain and they were very poor. They had old clothes and sometimes they were hungry. There was a cave in the mountain and in the cave there was a dragon. The father said to his children, Be careful. Don't go near the dragon's cave. The dragon is very fierce. One day, the man was on the mountain. He heard a strange noise. He turned round and saw the dragon. The dragon held up his foot. 
the dragon said. Please help me. I've got a thorn in my foot and I can't get it out. Please help me. The dragon had tears in its eyes. The man was frightened, but he was sorry for the dragon. He went to the dragon and took his big foot in his hands. He saw the thorn and he pulled it out. The dragon was very happy. You are a brave man, and you are a kind man, it said. And then it flew away. The next day, the family found a big box outside their house. Inside, there were new clothes, money, and good things to eat. Who is this from? Who brought these things for us? Do you know? Track 10. 5. Listen and Chant. Red dragon, 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 green dragon, 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 gold dragon, 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 blue dragon, 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 roar! Red dragon, 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 green dragon, 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 gold dragon, 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 blue dragon, 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 roar! Track 11, Unit 2, Spelling Listen to the sound the U makes in bull. The king of dragons had the small ears of a bull. Track 12, Unit 3 Space Travel 1. Who were the first space travellers? The first travellers in space were animals. In 1947, some fruit flies flew in a spaceship for three minutes. They returned to Earth safely. Two years later, a monkey called Albert II, flew 130 kilometres above the Earth. The first animal to travel around the Earth was a little dog called Laika in 1957. Her spaceship was just four metres high. 2. Who was the first man in space? The first spaceship to take a man into space was like a big ball. But not a very big ball. It was just 2.3 metres across. The flight in 1961 was 108 minutes and went around the Earth once. The flight controllers did not know how to land the spaceship safely. The astronaut, Yuri Gagarin, jumped out before it crashed. He landed with a parachute. 3. Who was the first man on the moon? A few years later, men travelled to the moon. That's 400,000 kilometres there, and then 400,000 back again. The rocket they used was huge. 111 metres high. The first man to walk on the moon was an astronaut called Neil Armstrong in 1969. He said it was one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. He spent two and a half hours on the moon. 4. How did men travel on the moon? After a few trips to the moon, the astronauts wanted to see more of it, so they took a moon buggy with them. They drove around on the moon. It did not go fast, but it was fun. 5. What were space shuttles? From 1981 to 2011, space shuttles flew into space and back. Space shuttles were planes that could fly in space. 
they flew around the Earth at 28,000 kilometers per hour. The astronauts saw a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes. Then they came back to Earth and landed like a plane. 6. What is happening in space now? Travel to the moon stopped in 1972, but people still travel in space. Space stations are huge spaceships that stay in space all the time. Scientists go to space stations to study, sometimes for a few days and sometimes for a long time. One man stayed for 427 days. Today, astronauts live and work on the International Space Station. It travels around the Earth 16 times a day. It flies 530 kilometers above us, but it is very big, and you can see it from Earth. So, keep your eyes open. Track 13, Unit 3, Listening. 2. Who is speaking? Listen and write the letter. Number 1. I love driving this buggy. It's really fun. I can drive all over the moon on it. Number 2. The work here at the space station is very interesting. There are things we can do here that we cannot do on Earth. And there aren't many people who can say, I work in space. Number 3. It lands like a plane, but it is very fast. When the wheels are down, I open a parachute. That helps to stop us. Number four. I like floating out here. I can see the Earth, the Moon, and many, many stars. It's beautiful. I enjoy my spacewalks, but I need to get inside now. Track 14. 3. Listen and say. We'll be back soon. We won't be long. We're going to the moon for the afternoon. Jump in, close the door, counting three, two, one. The engines roar. We're off. What fun! Up through the clouds, into outer space. Please go slower. It's not a race. Hey, are we lost? The moon isn't so far. We're landing at last. But this is a star. We won't be back soon. It wasn't much fun. We didn't go to the moon. We went to the sun, and it's hot, hot, hot! Track 15 Unit 3 Spelling The letters E-A in some words can make a long sound like E, leap, jeans, the letters E-A in some words can also make a sound like a short E. E. It's time for bed. Lay down your head. Track 16, Revision 1. 2. Listen and read. We flew over the mountains in Canada. We rode on a big red bus in England. We took pictures in Russia. 
We ran along the Great Wall of China. We found a lost city in South America. We climbed the Eiffel Tower in France. We drove across the desert in Africa. We saw kangaroos in Australia. Track seventeen, five. Listen and say which place. Come on, Professor. <gasps> I'm coming, Billy. <sighs> they can jump a long way, can't they? Yes, their legs are very strong. Look down there, Professor. They're very high. And there's snow on the tops. What a lot of cars! This is a big city, Billy. How many steps did we climb? Oh, oh more than a hundred. Now we're really high up. <sighs> Track eighteen. Unit four. Animals in the Gobi Desert. Herd animals. The herdsmen in the Gobi Desert look after thousands of sheep, goats, camels, and yaks. In the spring, they take their herds of animals up the hills to the new grass. In the autumn, they go down to the valley again. These herdsmen take their tents with them. They load pieces of the tent onto the camels. They carry the heavy loads on their backs. Camels are as strong as yaks. Bactrian camel. This camel can live in the desert for many weeks without food or water. It lives off the fat in its humps and water in its body. When a camel fills up with water. It drinks a hundred and fifty liters, thirty gallons. It can drink all this in ten minutes. It can eat plants with sharp thorns and spiky leaves. Bactrian camels have long, thick hair in winter. In the summer, their winter coats drop off. There are not many wild camels in the Gobi Desert. Most of them are looked after by herdsmen. Wild animals. These are gazelles. They are wild animals. This means that they find their own food. People do not take them to new grass. They are very fast animals. A new baby gazelle cannot walk at all. After one or two days, it can jump. When it is ten days old, it can leap at forty kilometers per hour. That is faster than a man can run. An adult gazelle leaps across the desert at more than sixty kilometers per hour. It is faster than a snow leopard. The snow leopard. There are four thousand to seven thousand snow leopards in the world. About one thousand live in the mountains of the Gobi Desert. They hunt alone for wild sheep and goats. They hide among the rocks and small bushes. Snow leopards never attack people. In winter, the snow lies deep, and the snow leopard's light grey fur helps it to hide. In the past, men hunted snow leopards for their beautiful fur, but now these animals are protected. Track nineteen, unit four. Listening, one, listen and write the correct name. Batold and Avir are brothers. Batold is two years older than Avir. When they were boys, they lived in the desert. They were very happy. Their father was a herdsman. He kept sheep and goats. When the boys grew up, the older brother went to live in the city. He became a doctor. The younger brother stayed in the desert 
and became a herdsman like his father. Now write their names on the pictures. Track 20. 2. Listen and circle true or false. In the desert, Avir had a small round house. In the city, Batold had a big house with six large rooms. Avir had a wife and four children, three boys and a girl. Batold had a wife and two children, two girls. They were younger than Avir's children. Batold was a good doctor. He worked hard and earned a lot of money. He had more money than his brother, Avir. Avir loved the desert, and Batold loved the city. They were both very happy. Track 21. Listen and sing. White sheep and black sheep. Track 22. Unit 4. Spelling. The letter Y on the end of some nouns says E. A new baby gazelle cannot walk at all. Track 23. Unit 5. The Horse Race. Watch me, father, Shirav called. He leapt onto his horse and disappeared in a cloud of dust. Suke stood quietly beside his father. His father's eyes were fixed on the massive rock at the far side of the valley. Proudly, he watched Shirav ride around it and start back towards them. Shirav was the fastest rider in the valley. Perhaps he was the fastest in the whole desert. Did I do well, father? asked Shirav as he jumped down from his horse. You did very well, Shirav, replied his father. You are a good rider. Shirav smiled. I can't wait for tomorrow, he said. The next morning, everyone got up early. It was festival day at last. There were games and horse races on festival day. Suke and his family set off towards the next valley. Shirav and his father rode their horses. Suke drove the cart. His mother and grandmother sat behind him. They laughed and sang happily. When they got to the next valley, friends waved to them and called out greetings. The boys' race was first. Suke took his horse from the cart. Just do your best, his father said. He helped Suke onto the horse. You are only eight years old, and this is your first race. Remember, Shirav is thirteen, and he won this race last year. Now go and join the other boys at the start. He pointed to a crowd of young riders beside a blue and red flag. Suke rode to the flag. His horse snorted with excitement. The other horses stamped their hooves and tossed their heads. Then they were off. Suke held on tightly as he raced along the valley. There were many riders in front of Suke, but his horse was fast. Little by little, Suke came nearer to the leaders. When they turned to go back, there were only ten riders in front. Suke's horse galloped strongly. He passed several riders. Then he saw Shirav's blue and green coat ahead of him. Run! Run! Suke told his horse. You are the strongest! At the sound of his voice, the horse leapt forwards. 
Shirav and Suke passed the leaders. The flag was not far away. Suke looked across at Shirav. His brother's eyes were fixed on the flag. He really wanted to win. Suke knew then that it was Shirav's race. Suke passed the flag just a moment after Shirav. I did my best, Suke told his father. Suke, said his father, I have two winners today. I am the proudest man in the world. Track 24, Unit 5, Listening. 2. Listen to the family at the horse race. Who is speaking? Write the names. Number 1. Suke, Shirav, listen to me. Enjoy the race, but be careful. You are my dear sons. It doesn't matter who wins, but you must come back safely to me. Number 2. Run, run! You are the strongest horse in the race. Shirav is in front of us. Run! Number 3. When my son, your father, was a young boy, he was the fastest rider in the desert. But I never saw him ride as fast as you two boys today. Number four. I won this race last year, but can I win again? I don't know. My brother is younger than me, but he is a good rider. Number five. That was a wonderful race. I am very proud of you, my boys. In fact, I am the proudest man in the world. Track 25. 3. Listen again. Were they speaking before the race, during the race, or after the race? Write before, during, or after under each name. Suke, Shirav, listen to me. Enjoy the race, but be careful. You are my dear sons. It doesn't matter who wins, but you must come back safely to me. Run, run! You are the strongest horse in the race. Shirav is in front of us. Run! When my son, your father, was a young boy, he was the fastest rider in the desert. But I never saw him ride as fast as you two boys today. I won this race last year, but can I win again? I don't know. My brother is younger than me, but he is a good rider. That was a wonderful race. I am very proud of you, my boys. In fact, I am the proudest man in the world. Track 26. 4. Listen and Sing. Trot, trot, trot. Go and never stop. I can ride my little pony, though the way is rough and stony. Go and never stop. Trot, 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 trot. Track 27, Unit 5, Spelling The letters O-I in some words sound like O-Y. At the sound of his voice, the horse leapt forward. Listen and read. The oil will spoil if you boil it. Track 28, Unit 6 The Amazing Ostrich The ostrich is the biggest bird in the world. It grows to 2.5 metres high. That is taller than a human. It is also the fastest bird in the world on land. It can run at 70 kilometres per hour.
It covers five meters in one step when it runs. However, it cannot fly. It has a small head, a long neck, and long legs with two toes on each foot. It has the largest eye of any land animal. The male ostrich has black feathers, but the female has brown feathers. It is not an intelligent bird. Its brain is smaller than its eyes. People say that when an ostrich wants to hide, it puts its head in the sand. It thinks nothing can see it. This is not true, but it's a nice story. The birds can be dangerous. They bite and kick. A bite can break your arm. A kick can kill you. Ostriches don't have teeth, but they eat small stones to break up their food. An adult ostrich has about one kilogram of stones in its stomachs. Yes, stomachs. An ostrich has three stomachs. Ostriches don't need to drink water; they get it from the plants they eat. But when there is water, they love to drink and take a bath. People keep ostriches on farms in some countries. Ostrich meat is very good to eat, and it's healthy. The farmers also sell the skin, feathers, and eggs. The female ostrich produces forty to fifty eggs a year. The eggs are the largest of any bird. One egg can weigh one point five kilograms. That is twenty times more than a chicken's egg. Artists cut the eggs into beautiful shapes. Some people turn them into lamps. Someone wrote Arabic poetry on one ostrich egg five hundred years ago, and you can still read it today. Queen Arsinoe the Second rode an ostrich. She ruled in ancient Egypt two thousand three hundred years ago. Today, people in South Africa and the USA ride ostriches in races. Ostriches live for as long as a human, up to seventy-five years. They live in many parts of Africa. They lived in the Middle East, but the last ones died in the middle of the twentieth century. Track twenty nine, Unit six, listening. Listen. What do you know about these animals? Number one. The blue whale can be more than thirty meters long, and it can weigh more than a hundred thousand kilograms. It is bigger than twenty five elephants. Even a baby is more than seven meters long. The blue whale is the most enormous creature on our planet. Number two, the peacock is a large bird. The female has brown feathers, but the male is magnificent. Its feathers are green and blue and shine in the sun. It has a very long tail. Each tail feather has the shape of an eye. Sometimes the peacock lifts up its tail feathers to form a beautiful fan. Some people say that it is the most beautiful bird in the world. Number three, the box jellyfish lives in the sea around Australia. Its body is a square box shape, and it has many long tentacles floating from it. These tentacles can sting. Swimmers in Australia must be very careful. A sting from a box jellyfish can kill a man. It is one of the most poisonous creatures in the sea. Number four. The platypus lives in Australia too. What a strange creature! 
It is about 50 centimetres long and weighs about two and a half kilos. It lives near rivers and streams. It is a mammal. In other words, its babies drink milk. But it lays eggs like a bird. It also has a beak like a duck. It is one of the most extraordinary Australian animals. Number five. The polar bear lives in the far north, in the snow and ice of the Arctic. Usually the polar bear walks, but it can run as fast as a horse. It is a very good swimmer, too. It is a very big animal. It weighs more than 650 kilos. From its nose to the end of its tail, it is more than three meters long. And when it stands up, it can be almost five and a half meters tall. It is a fierce hunter and the most dangerous animal in the Arctic. Number six. Dolphins live in the sea, but they are not fish. They must come up out of the water to breathe. They can swim very fast, up to 55 kilometers an hour. Dolphins often swim next to ships and jump in and out of the water. They are very clever creatures. They are perhaps the most intelligent creatures in the sea. Track 30 2. Listen again and write an adjective under each photo. Number 1. The blue whale can be more than 30 metres long and it can weigh more than a hundred thousand kilograms. It is bigger than twenty-five elephants. Even a baby is more than seven meters long. The blue whale is the most enormous creature on our planet. Number two. The peacock is a large bird. The female has brown feathers, but the male is magnificent. Its feathers are green and blue and shine in the sun. It has a very long tail. Each tail feather has the shape of an eye. Sometimes the peacock lifts up its tail feathers to form a beautiful fan. Some people say that it is the most beautiful bird in the world. Number three. The box jellyfish lives in the sea around Australia. Its body is a square box shape and it has many long tentacles floating from it. These tentacles can sting. Swimmers in Australia must be very careful. A sting from a box jellyfish can kill a man. It is one of the most poisonous creatures in the sea. Number four. The platypus lives in Australia too. What a strange creature. It is about 50 centimetres long and weighs about two and a half kilos. It lives near rivers and streams. It is a mammal. In other words, its babies drink milk. But it lays eggs like a bird. It also has a beak like a duck. It is one of the most extraordinary Australian animals. Number five. The polar bear lives in the far north, in the snow and ice of the Arctic. Usually the polar bear walks, but it can run as fast as a horse. It is a very good swimmer, too. It is a very big animal. It weighs more than 650 kilos. From its nose to the end of its tail, it is more than three meters long, and when it stands up, it can be almost five and a half meters tall. It is a fierce hunter and the most dangerous animal in the Arctic. Number six. Dolphins live in the sea, but they are not fish. They must come up out of the water to breathe. They can swim very fast, up to 55 kilometers an hour. Dolphins often swim next to ships and jump in and out of the water. 
They are very clever creatures. They are perhaps the most intelligent creatures in the sea. Track 31. 4. Listen and sing. Brown bear snoring, brown bear snoring in his winter sleep. Brown bear snoring, brown bear snoring in his winter sleep. But snow and ice are melting, icicles are dropping, brown bear's ears are listening, and his eyes begin to peep. Track 32, Unit 6, Spelling The letters A-W in words make a sound like OR. Can you draw an ostrich? Track 33, Revision 2 2, Listen and Read The children learnt about animals in Africa. They wrote about them. Tilly, please tell us about giraffes. They are the tallest animals in the world. They can be five metres tall. They are big, but they can run at 56 kilometres per hour. That's nearly as fast as a lion. Sam, what can you say about leopards? They are good climbers. They hunt at night and they climb trees quietly. They catch monkeys and other animals when they are sleeping in the branches. Ben, what did you write about lions? Lionesses are better hunters than lions. They hunt together and they can run at 50 to 60 kilometres per hour. They do not hunt every day. Lions protect the lionesses and the cubs. Nina, please tell us about crocodiles. Crocodiles are the best hunters in the rivers. They have strong mouths with lots of teeth. They have strong tails too. They hit animals into the water with their tails. Track 34. 4. Listen and find the picture. I think these animals are the most beautiful. They have brown fur with dark spots. They are big cats and they climb trees. I think these animals are the most interesting. When they run, they look slow, but really they are fast. They are big, but they only eat leaves. These animals are scary. They can hide and other animals can't see them. Only their eyes show above the water. The baby animals are called cubs. They have longer fur and sometimes have small dark spots. They look pretty, but they learn to kill like their mothers. Track 35, Unit 7 Flight Birds in the air In the sun's bright glare the earth glows red Birds fly through the air above my head over tall green trees, a flock of sheep and turquoise seas where dolphins leap. They're going to see the mountain snow. They're going to be where cool rivers flow. I want to fly where they fly to, rising high in skies of blue. 
I want to go where clouds float by. I want to know what it's like to fly. Did you see it? Did you see the duck? Did you see the sheep? Did you see the old red rooster perching half asleep? Did you see the fire under the balloon? Did you see it rise up like a huge blue moon? Did you see it drop gently to the ground? Did you hear the cheer from everyone around? It was so exciting. I can't believe it's true. The animals went flying. Did you see it too? Track thirty six, Unit seven, Listening, two, listen and point to the places on the map. Look, this is Coconut Island. Wow. We're going to spend seven days there. Where are we going to stay? At the Sandy Bay Hotel. Sandy Bay is on the west of the island. Look, here it is. It's a beautiful beach. Can we swim there? Of course. What else are we going to do? Well, on Sunday we're going to take a boat trip. You can go to Jamestown on the east of the island. Look, here it is. There's a little port there, and you can take a boat all round the island. Down to the south, past the castle on the hill, then north, past our hotel at Sandy Bay. The north of the island is very rocky. Look, Dolphin Point. There's a lighthouse there. Can you see? Dolphin Point. Are there dolphins there? Are we going to see dolphins? Yes, I think so. Wow, fantastic! And then after Dolphin Point, the boat comes back to Jamestown. It sounds great, Dad. I've got another surprise too. Really? What's that? Well, do you see the tall mountains in the middle of the island? Yes. There's a fantastic waterfall there. It's really high. So we're going to see that. But how can we get there, Dad? There aren't any roads on the map. You're right. We can't get there by car. So what are we going to do? We're going to fly. Fly? Yes. We're going to fly there in a helicopter. A helicopter? Really? That's amazing. I think we're going to have a great holiday. Track thirty-seven, two. Listen again, then answer these questions. Look, this is Coconut Island. Wow. We're going to spend seven days there. Where are we going to stay? At the Sandy Bay Hotel. Sandy Bay is on the west of the island. Look, here it is. It's a beautiful beach. Can we swim there? Of course. What else are we going to do? Well. On Sunday, we're going to take a boat trip. You can go to Jamestown on the east of the island. Look, here it is. There's a little port there, and you can take a boat all round the island. Down to the south, past the castle on the hill, then north, past our hotel at Sandy Bay. The north of the island is very rocky. Look, Dolphin Point. There's a lighthouse there. Can you see? Dolphin Point. Are there dolphins there? Are we going to see dolphins? Yes, I think so. Wow, fantastic! And then after Dolphin Point, the boat comes back to Jamestown. It sounds great, Dad. I've got another surprise too. Really? What's that? Well, do you see the tall mountains in the middle of the island? Yes. There's a fantastic waterfall there. It's really high. So we're going to see that. But how can we get there, Dad? There aren't any roads on the map. You're right. We can't get there by car. So what are we going to do? We're going to fly. Fly? Yes. We're going to fly there in a helicopter. A helicopter? Really? That's amazing. I think we're going to have a great holiday. Track thirty-eight, three. Listen and sing. Lazy coconut tree. Some folk like to go fishing far across the bay. I would rather be dreaming on a beach all day. Oh.
Track 39, Unit 7, Spelling The letters A-I-R and A-R-E can make the same sound. In the sun's bright glare, the earth glows red. Birds fly through the air above my head. Track 40, Unit 8, Holiday Island Anna, Pete, Tim and Sue are on holiday on a small island. On their first morning, their father is taking them for a walk. They are exploring the beach. Look, here's a cave. Wow, it's really dark in there. I can't see the back of it. Can we look inside, Dad? Uh, let's all go in, but you must be careful. Why? Are there pirates in there? Don't be silly, Tim. Of course there aren't any pirates, but you mustn't climb on the rocks. They are wet and you can easily fall. Come on, everyone. Let's find something interesting. It smells strange in here. It's the seaweed. It's chilly, isn't it? That's because there's water dripping down the walls. The rocks are rough, and there are tiny shells on them. Be careful, they're sharp. Look at this seashell. It's as big as my hand. It has a lovely curly pattern. It's really pretty. This shell has spikes. Look, it's smooth and pink inside. Mine is curly. And it's pointed at the top. I've got this shell. It's flat and it looks like a little fan. Well, look at this. It has spots. What's making that noise? It sounds like water splashing. I can hear it too. Is there a little stream somewhere? Yes, there it is. It's running out from under that rock. Let's go and see. You mustn't go past the rock. All right, Dad. Look here. There's a pool. Great. I'm going to look for a crab. Perhaps there's one under that stone. Turn it over. Ouch. The water's icy. Oh, look. Is it a crab? No. It's treasure. A gold necklace. And it has jewels. Dad! See what we've got. It's very beautiful. Can we keep it? No, of course not. We must take it to the police. Do we have to? Yes, we do. This necklace is valuable. It belongs to someone. The police can find out who lost it. Track 41, Unit 8, Listening. Listen, then answer these questions. Are you all ready? Can we go now? No, not yet. We must pack our bags first. I don't want to go. Oh, Sue, why not? We had a lovely time at the beach yesterday. I didn't like the cave. It was cold and dark, and it smelt funny. Well, we're going back, and that's that. Yes, come on. Let's pack our bags. OK, swimming costumes and towels. Don't forget your sun hat. And the sun cream. It's going to be really hot today. And we must take something to drink. Pete, can you fill this bottle with water? OK. What about sandwiches? No, we can buy something to eat at the beach. What about ice creams? Don't be silly, Tim. And one more thing. Let's take a torch. Good idea. It was really dark in that cave. Track 42. 2. Listen. Tick the things they must take with them. Are you all ready? Can we go now? No, not yet. We must pack our bags first. I don't want to go. Oh, Sue, why not? We had a lovely time at the beach yesterday. 
I didn't like the cave. It was cold and dark, and it smelt funny. Well, we're going back, and that's that. Yes, come on, let's pack our bags. OK, swimming costumes and towels. Don't forget your sun hat. And the sun cream. It's going to be really hot today. And we must take something to drink. Pete, can you fill this bottle with water? OK. What about sandwiches? No, we can buy something to eat at the beach. What about ice creams? Don't be silly, Tim. And one more thing. Let's take a torch. Good idea. It was really dark in that cave. Track 43. 3. Listen and say. Sun on the sand, sun on the sea, sun on the sailing boats, sun on me. Track 44. Unit 8. Spelling. The letters E-W can say OO in some words. It's treasure and it has jewels. Track 45, Unit 9. A letter from a sailor. My dear Harry, at last I have time to write to you. I am having the most exciting adventures. Now we are sailing through sparkling blue seas. The sun shines every day and the wind is gentle. It is blowing us towards India. Last week it was not like this. One evening the sky suddenly grew dark. The sun disappeared behind black clouds. We saw a flash of lightning and we heard the rumble of thunder. The wind grew stronger. Quickly the captain gave orders. We lowered the biggest sail. Then the storm hit us. The waves got higher and threw the ship up and down. The rain fell heavily. Our clothes were soaked with rain and seawater. We got another sail down. Then the wind ripped the last sail. It flapped around the mast in two pieces. Suddenly the wind tore them away. They flew off into the darkness. After that, we all went below. It was the most frightening night of my life. I could not sleep at all. My hammock swung backwards and forwards. I felt terrible. When the sun came up, the sky was blue and there was almost no wind. We sailed slowly to the nearest port. It was a very busy place. I saw wonderful things and I ate some delicious food. In the market there were baskets full of fruit. I liked the oranges best. There were some very strange fish. One was bright red. It had spines on its back and a huge blue mouth. I wanted to touch the spines. The fish seller stopped me. Those spines are dangerous, he said. Why? I asked. Because they have poison in them, he told me. Of course, I did not touch that fish. We stayed in the port for three days. We put up a new sail and tidied the deck. We are going to arrive in India in a few days. I want to ride on an elephant. My friend Jim says they are the biggest animals in the world. He saw elephants in Africa. They were as tall as the trees. I hope you are working hard in school. Are you learning a lot of new things? You can write to me. I want to know what you are doing. Your cousin, Tom. Track 46, Unit 9, Listening. 1. When Tom came home from sea, he told Harry lots of stories about his adventures in India. Look at the pictures and listen to Tom's story. I saw lots of monkeys in India, Harry. Sometimes they're very naughty. 
but sometimes they're very funny too. Listen to this. I saw it with my own eyes. Really? Yes, it's true. Listen. A man walked along the road to the market. He was a hat seller and he had a little cart. There were lots of hats in the cart. Well, it was a very hot day and the man was tired. So he sat down under a tree and went to sleep. There were lots of monkeys in the tree and when they saw that the man was asleep, they jumped down. Uh-oh. And they took all the man's hats. <laughs> oh no. Then they climbed up into the tree again. The man woke up. Where were his hats? He saw the monkeys in the tree. They had his hats. The man was angry. Give me my hats, he shouted. And he shook his fist at the monkeys. Well, do you know what the monkeys did? No. The monkeys shook their fists at the man. Now the man was very angry. He stamped his foot. And the monkeys stamped their feet. That's right. Well, now the man was very, very angry. Do you know what he did? He threw his hat on the ground. And the monkeys, they threw their hats on the ground. So the man got his hats back. Yes, he did. And he went on his way to the market very happily. That's a good story, Tom. Track 47. 3. Listen and Sing. <laughs> Track 48, Unit 9, Spelling In WH words, sometimes you can't hear the H. When the sun came up, the sky was blue. Track 49, Revision 3, 2, Listen and Read This is exciting, isn't it, Dad? Yes, but you must fasten your seatbelt, Tom. The plane is going to take off. I don't want to wear that, Dad. You must wear a life jacket, Joe. The water is deep. Look! A helicopter! You must sit down, Billy. The bus is going to move forwards. Look at my picture, Mum. I can't look at it, Anna. I have to look at the road. Track 50. 4. Listen and say which picture. That was low, wasn't it? I can hear another one. It's getting nearer. Come on, Joe. We're ready to sail to the island. There's a lot of traffic this morning. We're going to be late. Good afternoon. This is your pilot speaking. 
Welcome aboard our flight to London. Track 51. 5. Listen again and answer the questions. That was low, wasn't it? I can hear another one. It's getting nearer. Come on, Joe. We're ready to sail to the island. There's a lot of traffic this morning. We're going to be late. Good afternoon. This is your pilot speaking. Welcome aboard our flight to London. End of CD1